Hey everybody, I'm Ian, and this is my Apprentice with a Problem presentation. So, uh, at the start of this quarter, really at the start of this year, um, when I started living on off campus, because I was living on campus in the dorms last year, uh, I kind of discovered this gap um, between on-campus activities and off-campus students being aware of what was going on. I remembered how when I was in the dorms, there were posters everywhere, people were talking about events, the RAs were always advertising. Uh, but as soon as I was off campus, I had no idea what was going on all the time, which is frustrating because there is a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, and this ended up being a pretty universal issue that a lot of people were running into uh, living off campus. Initially, when I was trying to tackle this problem, I thought that the best community to talk to would be uh, clubs on campus. And then after kind of getting into that group and realizing that they had some information but not the other half, I started talking to off-campus students because they are the ones experiencing this issue uh, and I wanted some of their input um, on how I can take that problem and, and build a solution. Um, so during my club journey, uh, this is the favorite club I attended. I attended a couple different clubs, but this is my favorite, uh, and it wasn't even technically a real established uh, AS club. Uh, this is my friend Riley's board game group. They meet every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Um, sometimes uh, we just play games, they enough for our picture there. Other times, because um, like the group is basically, like this guy Riley lives in this one bedroom apartment and he'll just end up with like 30 or 40 people in this tiny apartment well, playing yeah. board games. Yeah. So at one point we expanded out, we played some zombie tag and uh, bond hall at night. That was a good time, that was a lot of fun. Um, that was my favorite uh, club that I went to and I interviewed Riley about um, starting it and why he did it and his favorite parts. Um, so yeah, he was the head of the club. He's not a student at Western. Uh, his club wasn't on campus. Uh, sounds kind of sketchy from the outside, but it, it was a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, but talking to him, because Riley works in the on-campus ministry, and that's the only connection he has to the Western community at all. Um, so his biggest problem was meeting students outside of that community, whether or not they were on or off campus. Um, he had a problem meeting new people to bring into his club, and then retaining those people coming back week to week. Because uh, his numbers would fluctuate between 10 and 40, depending on the week. Um, and then I interviewed Austin Caldwell, who is an off-campus student. Um, I know him pretty well. Uh, lives off campus, loves music. Um, his biggest issue is knowing what's going on on campus, uh, as far as events and clubs. Um, I interviewed several off-campus students, and one of the tools that Western has uh, for finding events and clubs is called OrgSync. Um, I know about OrgSync because I started this project and wanted to become more involved with on-campus activities and started using it. Um, but he, along with every other off-campus student I talked to, had no idea what OrgSync was or that Western had an online tool to help you find uh, clubs. Um, so what I tried to do towards the end was figure out a way for these club needs of wanting to retain people, retain those members, and bring in new members, and then the off-campus student needs of wanting to find out what's going on uh, and combine them into one solution that will solve both problems for both communities. And the two main solutions I came to, one is making a revamped OrgSync service. Uh, I talked to some other club leaders. I talked to Alex Barber, who's in this program. Uh, he's the head of the wakeboarding club. Uh, and he said the orcs sank, A, nobody knows about it, B, it's mainly for paperwork, and uh, C, it's just, it's not user friendly. So I thought one of the things I could do is create a website or some other web-based service as more of a marketing version of orcs sync, targeted at students and bringing them into clubs. Uh, the other thing that I had brought up when I was discussing this with my peers was to pitch a job to AS. Um, I'd kind of be a social media marketing manager for clubs on campus. If they have an active social media presence, I would create a Facebook page um, and then kind of post for them through there. It's not super refined yet, but it was an idea that was tossed up. And I thought I'd look into that a little more because it could be cool. Are there any questions? <laughs> So, so
to why you? That's a good question. Um, so I, I wanted to do a project that I could get invested in, and I feel like that was the most important part of doing an empathy-based project, is feeling like I was part of the community that I was serving. And being an off-campus student that really wants to get, um, like interact more with the on-campus Western community and meet more people. Because um, last year, I met like all of the people that I know. And then this year, it's been a lot harder to meet people. Um, so I think finding a solution for these issues and finding where these problems intersect between clubs and off-campus students, uh, I think it's a really good way for to build community and a good way for me to be part of that community building. Yeah. So I heard you say Facebook in the young person's world today is Facebook that funnel. That's what you're looking for, right? Yeah. So you looked at everything. I mean. We know Yik Yak used to be a thing, right? Mm -hmm. You could be like an influencer and Yik Yak was something <laughs> at one time, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm curious, did you think of other things other than Facebook? Yeah, and uh, I think I think the one thing I could have done more with on that is putting out a survey to get more input on what channel would be best for people, but that is something I brought up during the interviews I did with students. Um, and what it really came down to were three main social media channels that people use with Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Um, the majority of feedback was don't use Twitter because it's just not gonna be organized. Um, and Snapchat would be good for like event specific stuff. But Facebook was the one I, I was gravitating towards because Facebook is easier to um, like create events and stay organized. And a lot of these clubs already have pre-existing Facebook pages that they maintain a post on regularly. Um, so if I were to make, like do that Facebook thing, it would be kind of consolidating all of that club information into one hub so that a prospective student looking for an activity could look to one page instead of all these scattered pages all around and just look to mine and like, well, here's my interests. Like, let's see what clubs are involved in this and see if I like one. Does that answer your question? It does. Um, so then would you, I'm curious about Facebook very much so. So when I understand Facebook, would you create a club or would you create a group that then the other groups could, you would be like the admin? I'm, I'm maybe giving advice yeah. rather than asking a question, but if you form a group, then other people can do a lot of your work for you if you approve that's of true. it. That's true. Yeah, and that's another thing to think about. Initially, uh, I think the idea was just to create a page and then tag each of the clubs that wanted to be featured on the page, uh, just because it's easy for people to like a page and then see it in their feed. I like the idea of a group though, because that would definitely make it a lot easier for me. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I don't know if you have an answer for this, but going forward, if you were to do this, my question is how do you make it central? Because I know there's a bunch of attempts at doing this kind of in the ropes. So how, I wonder if there's a way to make it so that everybody at Western knows of this page. Does Western sponsor it? Does mm -hmm. EAS sponsor it? Something like that. Yeah, well, and that would be, I don't have an entire answer for that because I'm not that far into the development, but the part that I do know is that part of the reason I would pitch this to AS is to get kind of that endorsement where, because that's that, that was the biggest problem I ran into when I started thinking about how could I launch this is, like, how do you get anything from literally nothing to starting to build up and getting people to use it? Um, so yeah, I think getting it kind of endorsed by us is like a good first step, uh, but past that, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I haven't developed it that part. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you were part of this study work. I feel like when it became like definitely, hey, I, I committed to Western, we got into a Facebook group, like the year in yeah. Facebook group, kind of making it like, I don't want to go search for the Facebook group of clubs, the Facebook group of clubs searched for me and they invited me to like their club, like the group to find more clubs. So right when they are freshmen, they're coming, and then they have it for all four years, so they have to keep using Facebook. So you like go on, you're like, oh, there's 2,000 people in this group, I'm gonna invite all of them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or, or put yourself on that page. Yeah, thank you. I like that. Do 
you go really get a lot of people. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody.